Pittsburgh RVP. We're over here at the Honda Heritage Center, December the 1st, Thursday, going into the main showroom of the museum. Quarter till noon. I like to walk around the outside and then walk around the inside loop. It's kind of in a circle. So the Honda Jet is still on display with the engine. Honda dabbled in the private jets. It has a, you can kind of tell it from the back, the way they put the engine. Here's a good picture of it. The engines prop up on the, instead of the engines being back here, they have a unique way of the placement of the engine on the wing of the plane. And this is showing it right here. I think there's 400 of them in the sky the last three years ago that I heard. I think they're built in Texas. My camera runner, yes. A red one. And but you have the engines popping up. This is a Sisma. My friend, how you been, buddy? This is our I think there's four Sismas, they cost millions of dollars. Um, it's a robotic human. So I thought that someone was looking over me over, but it's a mannequin. That's the real thing right there. There's only like two of them maybe. Way tons of millions of dollars. Want to walk up in the cockpit? So here's an example of an NSX, which we built over 2,000 of them. And ended up the very last one pulled off the line last month. So here's a cutaway of our Honda Jet. And the instrument panel is currently not powered. Oh, they have a rune over here. We're going to see a rune. Here's the, uh, a model of the plane. Of the Honda Jet. That a lot of people don't, aren't aware exists. But here's a rough drawing. They've changed this display up a couple times. This is showing kind of the progression and the assembly through the years. There's um, the trophies from your motor trend and everything. The performance center hand built these, with the last one being Gotham Gray, I think it was. With 350 per year for six years. Yeah, it's just most four foot three. And he's sitting up on something. You'd think he would make a good video, this guy. People would get views. No one knows how to run them. For her. The race bike, the trophy case. I would like to come back. So this one's still here. The Clarity's still here with the Jamie Lee Curtis like we were talking about. So this is kind of showing the kids. Some robotic vacuums, I think that is. Or lawnmower, okay. This looks new to me. I think I've seen this one before. This is called a Unicub. Some type of mobility device. Through uh, the Unicub. Kind of exciting. Kind of look like my clock stopped there for a minute. This is showing their training center and some training on a robotic assembly. This one is a prototype, never produced. Kind of showing some fuel cells or battery cells? No. A crash dummy from research, uh, transportation research center. The clarity, compressed gas. Look back into this and see no one's back here. No one's training. 
and our 2023s began production, I'm going to say, it seemed like they were a month later than usual. When they change over from the 2022 to 2023, and uh, a soft reopening of our museum. There's me and a couple other people in here. Uh, the schools aren't probably aware that they've coordinated to bring the kids in yet. And yeah, we'll be back in the spring, I think. And um, they're talking about maybe having a couple things change. And the the curator retired, Lynn. She's not here. She's with Honda. And it's been over three years since we've been up here. August of 19 was the last time. And I thought I would be back at spring and I, everything shut down. 2006, Honda Ridgeline, Truck of the Year, from Motor Trend, Truck of the Year. That's, that's the trophy right there. So that's, that was something to see today. And um, they had a waiting list on that truck when they started building it. It would be neat if they had one here. This is my car, I call it. My friend's old uniforms. The first day that they came, they had these funny hats. It's kind of a collector's item. Well, I'll have another look at this before I leave. They had this up to the Detroit Auto Show back in the day. Went through a lot of trouble to paint all the parts and everything on it. Nice display. A lot of people here had a hand in developing this guy. The the fuel tank's in the back seat somewhere here. Um, compressed natural gas is compressed at 5,000 PSI. The racing engines still on display. The race bike, the race van from the Alabama Tuscaloosa plant. Or no, um, Lincoln, Alabama, I'm sorry. Honda sponsors the hill climb. They used to sponsor the tent at the quartzite, the the generator part of Honda. and um, But, you know, since that big shakeup, it's Progressive Insurance sponsoring it today. I'm not sure what happened. The, what do you call these, F1 race cars? A very hot race bike over here. I mean, my knee comes up higher than that motor. Amazing. It's bigger than I remember. Some of them look like toys. A, a bike they have with a pretty impressive winning history of the 1,000cc displacement. And then the factory riders would come around and open them up and everything. It was pretty something to see how talented they could make them bikes do what they wanted. And this is an NSX. I, re I remember this one. Yes. From the first generation of the NSX race car. Still here. See anyone in here you know? There's Hiroshima. So they built these talons and they came in at twenty twenty five thousand and we thought no one's going to pay that. And now all of them are like that. Those razors, they're all north of twenty some thousand, and you can't buy one. They're sold out. This is the very first one produced. Okay, we've seen it up front before, January of twenty nineteen. 
So we saw that in August of 2019. That's the first one to come off the line. Serial number one. And so here we are, December 2022. It's only been that amount of time that the business changed so much. That one came out, we were really worried that it wouldn't sell because of the price. And then the prices of everything went up. The $20,000 stuff's 30000 now, just because the wind changed direction. Beautiful museum. The sunlight, the natural light's pretty fabulous. We remember this one from the day. And it's a 700, not, I don't, that didn't ring a bell. I thought there was a 500 and a 1,000, but this is a 700, kind of the middle of the road one. Very tactical looking, four-wheel drive, with the Honda Reliability, the Honda Pioneer, 700. Here's the Rune, we produce those, um, very low production numbers. And you could buy them for a while. The tires were $675 a piece without putting them on. So I wasn't interested in, you know, putting one in the corner of my garage because of the tire replacement on an annual basis. And I've had 10 sets of tires on my bike with 100000 The yellow was a rare color. Very rare. Um, golden wing and yellow. But they were desirable to certain people. These sold like hotcakes. There's none of these available either. But these rooms, sort of, no one would buy them. And they were, didn't produce them, but I think two years. But they had the production numbers on there. That sounds like they had them more years. They even had an 1800 from upgraded from the 1500. But there's so few of them, there's... Not too many people even know what it is when you're riding one, what they're looking at. A master, an art masterpiece right there. Very odd tire sizes though, and I mean they were 675 bucks a tire front and rear back, you know, that was 15 years ago when I bought. And uh, so I couldn't buy one. A clay model of the, like we were saying that was a truck of a year. Kind of a, a pearl reflection off this guy. One of the first ones. And another was a, a first the luxury car. Yeah, you was really something if you had one of these in the day. And it had them funny tinted glasses. It had a, a tan tint to the Acura which set it off when you was cruising. Very refined for for the 90s, right there. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead. Actually, in the 80s, I'm sorry, 1986. Um, well ahead of the pack, you know, from what Detroit was producing in '86. And uh, I'm gonna wrap it up with that on this one. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bogart Derby Honda Heritage Center, Thursday, December the 7th. They're currently open five hours a week from five, uh, 10 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. There she is at the Detroit Auto Show, the spokes model. That was our old, the first generation of the NFX. And they don't have the Detroit Auto Show anymore. North American Auto Show ceased to exist. They tried to get it going again. It was on the wrong time of year and everything. Uh, it's, it's not, it's a different show if it does. And you have a uh, soft reopening after three year wait um, at the Honda Heritage Center. Yeah, he's gone.